Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at for loops in Carol. Let's say you wanted to create a new Carol program that instructed Carol to put down 100 tennis balls. How might you do this? To put down one tennis ball, you command Carol to put ball. For the second tennis ball, you command Carol to put ball. You call put ball again for the third and fourth and so on. You would need to call put ball 100 times. Phew, that sounds like a lot of code. Instead, we could use a structure called a for loop. Introducing for loops. A for loop is a control structure that repeats instructions for a fixed number of times. Like JavaScript, most programming languages have for loops, so it's an important tool to use during your programming journey. Let's see what for loops look like in JavaScript. Let's look at the parts of a for loop. The for loop header, curly braces, and nested inside of the curly braces is called the loop body. There's a lot of syntax, but there's only one important part for you to focus on, the count variable. That tells our computer how many times to repeat. What we're saying is repeat the indented code count number of times. Similar to our functions, all the code that we want in our loop gets indented one level. Just like functions, once we stop indenting, that code is no longer part of our loop. So looking at a specific example, if we want to place 10 balls down, then we write the function header. We need to change the count variable to the number of repetitions, so in this case we replace it with 10. And then we write our curly braces. And next we put our code that we want to repeat indented, in this case the put ball command. If we want to place 100 balls, we write the function header, we change the count variable to 100, then our curly braces. Next, we put our code that we want to repeat indented, and in this case again, the put ball command. Let's take a look at this now in the editor. We want Carol to move forward nine spaces in this program. So we've included the move command nine times. And in fact, when we do run the program, Carol does move nine spaces forward. But now that we know for loops, we can make this program much simpler. So let's remove all of these nine move commands and include our new for loop. So we're going to put for let i equal zero and while i is less than 9, it's going to continue the for loop, and it will increment or add 1 to the value of i each time that it goes through the loop. Then we're going to add our curly braces. Don't forget the curly braces because everything that's indented in those curly braces is your actual commands that are going to be executed every time the for loop runs. And so in this case, that command will be move, because we want Carol to move forward. Now when we reset and run our program, we see that every time it goes through the for loop, Carol moves forward one space, until she has moved nine spaces. And in fact, when the program ends, you can see that the variable i has now a value of nine, indicating that the for loop has run through the code nine times. Now, if we change that 9 to, let's say, 6 spaces, let's see what happens when Carol moves this time. When we run our program, the for loop executes the code 6 times, making Carol move forward 6 spaces. Now, we could do other commands in here. Perhaps we want to put 6 balls down in the first square, or the first space, where Carol is located. We could remove the move command and say put ball. Now let's reset our world, and Carol should put down six balls. Now when the code is finished running, it's a little difficult to see how many balls Carol has put in that first space. So let's move her forward when the, when the program finishes. We're going to put that move forward, we're going to have that outside of our for loop. 
So let's do move, and we'll just put one command there. We only want her to move one space. We'll reset the program, and when we run it, Carol does indeed put down six balls, and then moves forward so that we can see that she's put down six balls.